It's lunchtime and I'm going to be doing something today that I have not been able to do for a while which is to cook a nice hot meal out here in the woods. So what's on the menu? Black bean soup. But this version is going to be low carb and high protein. If you're interested, keep watching. It's a black bean soup, an absolute classic, super easy to make and something that's so customizable. You can make it any way you want and it will still come out tasting great. So what makes this version low carb, high protein? Well, I'm actually subbing out regular black beans for black soya beans. They are high in fiber, low in carbs, high in protein. So that's basically it. After that, it's pretty much identical recipe. So let's get started. I'll take you down to the ground where my impromptu kitchen is. I'll show you the ingredients and I'll show you how to make this. All right, let's get started here. I have my little roll cook kit made for me by Rob Young at the Crafted Woodsman. A couple of implements for cooking here. I like bringing that out. It's kind of organizes everything I'm going to need for cooking. So uh, I'm going to go through the ingredients for the recipe the way I'm making it. But I'll, as we go along, I'll talk about a few options for you, especially if you're not necessarily on a low carb or ketogenic diet or high protein diet, then you can certainly sub out some of these ingredients any way you want. So start with. Um, I'm going to be heating up some vegetables and what I've got here is some red and yellow or orange peppers and some onions and I have some garlic as well that I'll be adding to it in a second. So first thing I'm going to do is saute these and just soften them up. Now optional and the meat I'm going to be using in this case is ham all sliced up. What I would have preferred to have done is start it with bacon. So you could easily brown up your bacon and get it not crispy but just cooked so that all the fat comes out and then cook the vegetables in that. I didn't have any bacon that I could come up with today so that's why I grabbed the ham. So bacon is great, ham is great, but again you can put anything you want in this. Alright, so let's get started. I thought you might be of interest. I wrote this down. Not that this is any kind of a review. But what I'm using to cook with today, first off, this is the Fire Maple FMS125 Pro remote gas canister stove. What a monster. This is really something else and it really does work well. And the other one is this. This is a Keith Titanium. This is the TI6015 model and it's a 1.8 liter pot. And it's really, like it's nothing, nothing there at all. But wait, there's the lid for it. Now, I don't want to burn the things that I'm cooking. I will be simmering this for quite a while. And titanium, as you were aware, is not a great conductor of heat. Things get hot and usually there's a hot spot and things stick. I could risk doing the sauteing in this on a very low temperature without any, uh, and just keep things moving. But I brought something else. Now this is counterintuitive to ultralight cooking, but it's really quite cool. This is a cast iron trivet that you might put a pot or a kettle on on the counter. Guess what I'm going to be using it for? This is going to be my heat diffuser. So first thing to do is to get the stove lit. And this stove, by the way, it's just a matter of getting my fingers around it has a piezoelectric lighter, so I can turn it on. There, that's better. Couldn't get my fingers to work the lighter properly. I'll turn this down low. I'm gonna put my heat diffuser on. That's gonna take a minute for things to warm up. And while that's happening, I'm going to put in some oil. Now you can use oil, you can use butter, you can use ghee. I actually have ghee with me as well, but I am going to use oil. This is olive oil. So I'm putting in, I don't know, a tablespoon or so. Now, I'm not giving you so much measurements for this because um, I had to shrink the recipe down to be a one person recipe. And at that, this is probably going to make two servings or very hungry persons, one serving. But I will be putting all the ingredients in the video description. And then you can print it out, write it out, modify it any way you want. I'm looking for the oil to be, oh it's starting to heat up, yeah that's nice. Moving it around the bottom of the pan. And uh, this is my wooden spatula. And it looks like it's starting to. It must have been some oil. Yep, yeah, something on top of that uh, trivet that's starting to smoke. Ooh, strong onion smell, but that's all right. Now this is going to take a few minutes for this to 
as you can see, it's going to take a few minutes for that to kind of be brought down to a, I don't know, what would you call it, a glazy state, translucent state. So when we get to that point, I'll bring you back. All right, a couple minutes later, if you can see that, things are getting translucent. A little bit of browning on the bottom, so even with that diffuser plate underneath there, it's still transferring quite a bit of heat through, but um, that's okay. Any glazing or any browning that actually gets in there, uh, that actually is going to add flavor when we get to adding the, the stock to this. All right, next step will be garlic. Yep, that's my garlic. Whew, strong. Don't put the garlic in too soon. It tends to burn. It loses its flavor. You know, garlic can be added a little later. Not too much later, but a little bit later as well. All right, there's the garlic, and I'll stir that around for a couple of minutes. Now, it occurs to me I have to go find my bottle of water because I'm going to need quite a bit of water in this to create the stock. So I'll bring it back when it's time to create the stock. All right, now I've got to add stock. So if I was at home, I'd reach to the fridge and get out my you know, boxes or jars of stock, uh, broth, broth, I guess it is. And it can be vegetable, it can be chicken, it can be beef, it can be whatever you have. So I don't have the stock itself. What I do have is a concentrated that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to start with water directly in a minimum of two cups tiny bit more there we go so there's my two cups of water it could be a little bit more and that's going to heat up and i got to put in my stock and so this is better than broth hopefully that's showing up there. It's kind of a pasty stuff you get it in jars you can buy it at the grocery store it's concentrated broth and there are directions for how much to put on. I think this is going to be a little bit more than two teaspoons here. Again, adjusted to. Hmm. Actually, it tastes pretty good just as it is, too. But that's going to have to mix through to create the stock. All right. I got to turn that up a little bit to get that up to a higher point. And I'll bring it back in a moment. All right, I brought the uh, stock and vegetables all up to a high simmer. And I just turned it down a little bit because we're going to be doing a bit of simmer. So star of the show, black beans, black soya beans in this case. I mean, I'll be honest, you really probably cannot tell the difference between regular black beans and regular soya beans, either in the way they look or in the way they feel and taste in your mouth. So that's what we're going to use today, black soya beans. The brand that I'm using, this is one full can. The brand that I'm using, I picked up at one of our local grocery stores. I did have to go into the health food section to find it. It's called Eden Valley. So if you're interested in finding black soya beans as opposed to using regular black beans, that's uh, the brand we have available to us around here. And of course, the other prime ingredient in this case is going to be the ham. Yes, I would have preferred the bacon, but ham is good too. All right, get it all in there, give it a stir. Oh, I'm glad I chose this 1.8 liter pot. I've made that mistake before where I've underestimated it. Now, which one is which? I think it's this one. I need to add some herbs and... Yep, that's the right one. Add some herbs and spices, and I'm going to do it in two installments. Canada geese flying over. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it in two installments. So the first group I'm going to be putting in is uh, oregano, cayenne, and a little bit of salt. In they go. I'm going to let that simmer in with everything else, and I have some more spices to add. Uh, second last step, we'll say. All right, everything is in there. As you can see, it looks very watery right now, but I have to give it some time, so I'm going to let it simmer for about 20 minutes, and that's when I'll bring it back. All right, I've let this simmer actually quite a high simmer as you can see for about 20 minutes hopefully it doesn't steam the camera up uh, i could leave it go longer in fact the longer 
the better the fusion of the flavors and everything together, and maybe a little even a little bit more softening of the beans themselves. All right, last ingredient is a little bit more of my spices. In this case, some cumin, some salt, some pepper, and some cayenne pepper as well. But of course, once again, you can put in whatever it is that you favor in spices. A nice big chunk of garlic there, that's going to look good. All right, now, here's the secret step. I'm going to turn, yeah, that's turned down pretty good. Okay, here's the next step to this. If I was at home, I would probably, well, not probably, I would remove about half or maybe just a third of the beans, put them in a container, and blend them up, either in a blender, immersion blender, or maybe even a potato masher like this. Of course, I'm not home, so I don't have those things. But it makes a big difference to the consistency and uh, the way it, you know, the way it, it tastes, I guess, when you, when you go to eat it. So we're out in the woods. What am I going to use? Well, I did bring a potato masher, and I could mash up until I estimate that I've done about one-third of the beans, but I thought I would try something bushcrafty. So I just made this out this morning when I came out. This is my bushcraft potato masher. All right, we're going to see if this works. If it doesn't work, I can always bring the other. That's the reason I brought the other one. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to make this out here. So we'll do that. We'll just see if we can smash up some of the beans, kind of like a mortar and pencil. So I'll just mash up until I think I've got about a third of them done. I don't know how you would know. But I can see it getting thickening thicker as we speak. You know, this is working out pretty good. Where did I get the idea for this masher? I actually looked up Bushcraft Potato Masher and I came up with something similar looking to this. I said, I can make that. Find the right piece of wood. This is maple. on a knife and a couple minutes work which was fun all right I think we have mashed up probably about a third that looks good I'm going to turn the heat off all right now I got to transfer some of this into my bowl which is right here and I have a spoon to help me with this I'm probably just going to pour some in I don't have a big ladle Ooh. Yeah, that's about right. I think I got more stock than I would probably wanted in here. But there it is. Now, that is hot. So I'm going to give it a couple seconds to cool off. And I have one last addition to add to this before I eat it. And that's when I'll bring it back. All right, I have my bowl of steaming hot soup here. Let's see if I can bring the camera down to give you a bit of an image of what it looks like. Black bean soup. Probably could have smashed a few more of those beans up, but can you see how it added to the thickness of the soup itself? All right, bring the camera back up a bit. Now, I do have one more ingredient I want to add to this, and I'm going to have, how am I going to do this? I'm trying to balance this on one knee. That's probably not a clever thing to do. I have my bushcraft napkin for my table, which is my knee. That last ingredient in this case is avocado. I cut up an avocado, smashed it up before I left the house and put it in. You can't do that and expect the avocado to stay very green for very long. So, uh, you know, I, I cut it up this morning. It's still green, actually starting to brown around the edges. Avocados will do that. But I'm putting this on top of my soup for flavor, for uh, a little extra fat to be added to the meal. Uh, but you can do any number of things. I could have put salsa, sour cream, avocado, crushed up tortilla chips. I guess it's all up to you. But for this meal, I'm just going to put some of this avocado in. And I'm going to have to do that out of screen here so I don't spill it trying to put it on my knee. All right, that should do it. Okay. And if I wasn't using this double wall bowl, this would be smoking hot in my hands and on my leg here, but uh, all right, let's have a taste test here. Show you what I've got. Well, that's too much. 
Yeah. So I've got some beans, some avocados. Wow. There. Pretty much all beans and ham in this one. Okay, that was hot. Ooh, full disclosure, just short of burning myself. Shouldn't be in such a rush. Flavors. So the spices I used were salt and pepper, uh, oregano, not a spice, a herb, uh, salt and pepper, oregano, cumin, and cayenne pepper. And the recipe called for pinches. Well, I don't know what a pinch is, so I put a little bit more in than I needed for, to probably. But then again, that's my soup, right? Making it the way I want to. Mm. Oh man, this is rich and beautiful. Um, all right, we're gonna wrap this video up. Just give me a minute, I've gotta clear my throat because that, that was a little on the hot and spicy side. All right, let's wrap this video up. I'll tell you now, in full disclosure, I probably put a bit more cayenne in this than I should have, at least initially. I mean, you can always add some in if you taste it and you think it needs more. It's just, you can't take the cayenne out afterwards. So I have my bottle of water next to me, and if I found it got a little spicy, I'll just drink a little water. But I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying it. Now, would I change anything? I don't know much, so much change because this is so good the way it is, but I will probably try this again with bacon. Uh, I mean, I, I, I did try this at home. It's not the first time I've made this, and I used bacon at home, so I don't know why it would taste any different. Well, things always taste better in the woods, right? So if you like bacon, use bacon. If you're not a fan of bacon, leave it out. You know, you can make this a vegetarian dish if that's what you want to do. But I used ham, and I would use bacon readily. And I probably could use chicken, probably could use any number of things uh, if you want to. I did sub out regular black beans for black soya beans. I don't know that anybody could tell me they can taste the difference in the flavors between the two of them. They're just so close. But the black soya beans have much more protein, much more fiber, and much fewer carbohydrates, which is exactly what you're looking for on a low-carb or a ketogenic diet. Okay. As I mentioned, I'll put the recipe that I used in the video description. Now, I'll tell you now, it's double what I made. So it, if you follow the recipe there, it'll be twice as much. So, you know, half it if you want to make it in the field. Make it full recipe if you're making it at home. Because you'll probably want seconds of this. I'm not sure if I'll finish it all today or not, but I might. All right. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please put those in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.